everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. Today is upgrade day on my WorkB Z1 Plus CNC. Now, if you've been following along on the build series of videos on the CNC, you'll know that when I built it, I added the Katsu trim router based router head to the CNC just to get me up and running and get me used to the machine and use that as a learning process before I done anything else. Now, I have got to the stage now where I have reached the limits of this trim router base router head and I need to upgrade. Now, I am going to be upgrading to a Mefel FM1000 milling motor. So, if you're considering buying a CNC or you already have one with a Katsu style trim router as the router head, this video could be of much interest to you if you're considering upgrading to a milling motor. So firstly, I am going to give the reasons why I have now reached the limits for my use of the trim router, and then I will give an explanation as to what the milling motor offers over a trim router based router head. So how have I reached the limits of my trim router in the CNC? And it's purely down to the purpose for which I'm going to be using the CNC. A trim router is, as the name says, it's a trim router. It's designed to be a handheld router that you do a small bit of machining, you turn it off, you go away, you come back, you run it again. They're not designed to be running for long times in a CNC environment. So if you're doing projects for 20 minutes or 30 minutes on the CNC, there's no problem, it will do it. I have the need coming up where I will be probably running this router for maybe up to two, three, possibly four hours doing certain projects, and it's just not designed for that. The second thing is the speed control. Now, most trim routers like this one are going to have a speed range of between 13,000 and 33,000 RPM. Now, they are adjustable on the router. It's not that accurate, but you can adjust them down, but you can't go any lower than 13,000 RPM. Now, I do have a project coming up where I'll be working with acrylics and PVC, and I will need to be running at a lower speed than 13,000 RPM. That's the second reason. The third reason is, as again, these are a trim router, they're designed to be a handheld router running roundovers on the sides of uh, projects and things like that, or running dado grooves. The bearing system in them, are, it's not really designed to have minimal run out, as we'll call it. So there is going to be a small little bit of play in the shaft, which can cause variations in the pass on the CNC because of the lateral forces uh, involved by using it on the CNC. And fourthly is the noise. The noise of these is very high and high pitched. The same as any router, it's not just these, it's most routers are going to be very high pitched noise. So that's what have brought me to the position where I just need to upgrade from this. It have done everything I've wanted to do up until now, but I just need to upgrade now to take the next step forward. And the next step forward is going to be the Mafel FM 1000 milling motor. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring this in closer. I'm going to unbox the Mafel, and I'm just going to run through the spec and the features on the milling motor before I actually install it on the machine. Okay, so. Out of the box, we have our motor, there's an instruction book, and you have a collet wrench. That's what comes in the box. Okay, this is made by Mafel. Um, Mafel are a German company who make a lot of top quality and precision tools. Now, you can get this from O's Nest. They offer it as part of the options when you're order a CNC or you can get it from them after as an upgrade like I'm doing here now. So just a quick overview of the motor. It comes with an 8mm collet and Oosnest also provide a quarter inch collet and nut 
And if you get the starter mill kit from O's Nest, you will also get a 1.8 inch collet. Now, the quarter and the 1.8 really is going to cover you for the majority of what you're going to be wanting to use this far on the CNC because the majority of the bits are either going to be 1.8 shank or quarter inch shank. It has a 43 millimeter uh, clamping neck, so you will get a 43 mil clamping collar from Ooze Nest to fit the motor. It also has a very convenient push button lock for the spindle. So you just push that and that locks it. So you just use your wrench then to tighten and loosen the spindle. It has a very comfortable and I have to say smooth acting on and off switch. It has the important label which says made in Germany and it's the type FM1000. So that's a 1000 watt motor. So there's gonna be plenty of power in this motor. It has speed settings on the top ranging from one to six. Now I will cover that a little bit more in a minute. And it has a four meter flex. So, which is ideal for my use because I have the 1500 by 1500 CNC. So to have four meters of flex to get from the head the whole way back to where I'm actually plugging it in is very helpful. So that's a quick overview of the machine. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about why the spec of this motor is meeting my needs now compared to the likes of the Katsu trim router. These motors are designed and built for constant use. So they're designed and built for the use in CNC machines, milling machines, router tables, and so on, where they will be running for long periods of time. It has a very good cooling system to keep the motor cool. So it is, like I said, it's just designed to be running for long periods of time. The second thing on the Katsu, which was an issue for me, was speed control. Now, as I said, this has a range from one to six on the dial, but it also has a label on it, giving you reference as to what each of those settings are. So for example, number one is 4,000 RPM, up to number six, which is 25,000 RPM. So you have a lower, range of speeds compared to a trim router. You have indefinite speed control the whole way from 4,000 to 25,000. It is not an incremental switch that only has one, two, three, and four, five, and six. You can actually pick one and a quarter, one and a half. It is increasing speed by every minute turn of that dial. So you have indefinite speed control between those ranges. Another thing is this machine also has uh, an electronic control which not only gives you a soft start on the startup of the machine, but it also has something called constant speed under load control. And what that means is it's a very similar to say cruise control in your car, that if you set the machine at 20,000 RPM, once the machine comes under load, most machines will die down, the likes of the router will die down, you might drop down to maybe 18,000 RPM. But what this does, it will increase the power to keep a constant 20,000 RPM, even when it's cutting. So that's a very good feature to have in the machine. And another part of the control system is it does have an overload trip and it will actually flash in the speed dial here so that if it did happen to get to the point where it was starting to overheat, it will actually automatically cut out. The next advantage to this machine is the accuracy. Like I said, there would be a bit of run out on the likes of a trim router just because of the way they're made. But this is designed 
to have minimal run out on the spindle. So the way, one of the ways that are achieving that is that the armature, the whole way to the spindle is actually machined from one piece of steel and then that's balanced and they're using, I think, a double bearing system at the end here. So their claim that the run out on this is minimal. It's something like 0 0.01 of a millimeter. And the last really cool feature of the Mafel is the noise level. It is not near as noisy as a trim router. It doesn't have that same high pitched noise. So what I'm going to do just to compare both is I'm going to do my own very non-scientific experiment on both. I'm going to run a test on idle speed and I'm also going to run a test doing a small cut, the very same cut with both machines, just when you include the cutter noise, just to see what results that I get. So I'm going to add that to the end of the video, so make sure you stick around to see what the result of that is. So next I'm just going to swap out the Katsu for the Mafel in the CNC mount. So as you can see, it's a very simple process to swap over from the Katsu to the Mafel in the CNC. Now there's one other thing I would like to touch on before I move on to the noise test, and that's the cost difference. There is a pretty sizable cost difference between the Katsu and the Mafel, and you're probably looking at this video thinking about getting a Workbee CNC for yourself, and you're trying to decide whether you go for the trim router and, or the Mafel, well, Oosnest have recently launched their own router head, which is a kind of a, an in-between both. It's better than a trim router, and it has some of the features that you'll find on a milling motor, and it is about half the cost of the Mafel FM1000. I don't have any hands-on experience of the router head, but I have seen the spec of it, and I do believe if I was to get the machine tomorrow morning, I would start with the Oosnest router head instead of a trim router and I would build up to the Mafel then once the need comes about. I will leave a link to the Oosnest website in the description of the video and you can go and have a check it out for yourself. So without further ado, let's move on to the noise test. So that was my very non-scientific experiment, just to compare both machines using a decibel meter, the same distance away from both machines, running idle and also doing a cut. And as you can see at the start and at the end of the clip, both machines are running idle. Now the Katsu was averaging around 91 decibels and the Mafel was averaging around 78 decibels. There wasn't much of a difference in the cutting, when both, both were averaging in or around 93 decibels at the high end, 
once doing the cut, when you add in the, cut, the knives from the cutting process itself. But if you notice, when the first part of the clip was done with the natural knives of the katsu, and then the second half of the clip was done with the natural knives using the mafel, and you can clearly hear, even in the video, the, the Mafel doesn't have that same high-pitched noise. It doesn't really show up on the decibel meter, but you can actually hear it in real life. So it is actually a lot easier to be in the workshop with the Mafel doing the cut than it is with the Katsu trim router. So, not very scientific like I said, but hopefully it'll give some people an insight into the differences of both and maybe help make the decision on whether you want to take the step to the Mafel or whether you're happy with a trim router or there is a third option like I said of the Ooze Nest Workbee router head which I don't have experience of but that is another option. So that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. Like I said hopefully someone have taken something from this and learned a little bit about the Mafel uh, FM1000 milling motor. If you'd like to see more upgrades that I'm going to be doing to the CNC, maybe consider subscribing so you won't miss out on those when they happen. So all that's left for me to say is thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Good luck.